So this presentation is kind of a fun thing that we haven't done before and I wanted to see how it went because I thought that this would kind of be a good transition to maybe doing an open house in person event um, when we can safely reopen. So I thought I'd actually kind of start with the basics. We're at the very beginning. So what is a new accession? Um, the assessment sessions process is kind of how we formally adopt an object into the museum family. I kind of equate it to adopting a rescue dog or cat because you're committing to providing it with a forever home as a museum. It's not a temporary home. It's not a home until maybe we don't like it anymore. We're forever responsible for the well being, the physical safety, and the financial commitment to whatever we do accession into the museum. So the accessions process is a little bit rigorous. Every museum kind of has their own standards according to their collections management policy, but I think most of them, including ours, kind of boil down to three little steps. So we have a collections committee that's made up of several members that meets and they look at all items that I am proposing to them that we accession into the collections and they vote on them. At that time, they can ask questions, um, they can make other recommendations based on the object, um, and then they ultimately vote whether they do want to formally accession it or not. The second step is that we complete all the processing paperwork. So this is kind of the chain, you know, a deed of gift, um, information on the actual object itself and the donor, all of that fun stuff. And then last but not least is kind of the database logging. So that is where we formally assign the object a profile page, so to speak, in our digital catalog, and it gets an object ID number. And the object ID number is used to kind of track um, valuable information about it. So who donated it, where it came from, how old it is, also its physical whereabouts in the museum. It's amazing, no matter how big or small your museum is, things will always get lost does happen. So it's really good to keep an updated record of where everything is. So even if we take something out of storage and put it on display for each object that we do that for, we would have to go back into our da database and update that. So that's kind of just the nuts and bolts of it. So our collections committee is made up of several people. We have the Basus, we have Bonnie Cohen, we have Howard Fishman, which this is a video clip from Howard, um, where recently we actually had the late Pamela Barnes on our committee. Pamela actually passed away, unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago due to causes unrelated to COVID. Um, and I did actually want to kind of rec recognize her today because today would have actually been her 90th birthday. Um, so Pamela moved to Hermosa Beach in 1941 um, with her family, and she was very active at St. Cross Church. She worked in the administrative office for many years, off and on through several decades, um, and she got kind of invited in the 90s to start working at this little history committee thing, and she kind of had a, an association with the museum ever since. So um, if we have anybody who was friends or family with Pamela, thank you so much for sharing her with us. Um, it was really kind of a privilege to have her on our collections committee, and she was always had fantastic stories about growing up in Hermosa. I mean, being in town since the 40s, definitely a lot of cool stories. So thank you everyone for sharing Pamela with us. So our collections committee marches on and I have a little clip from Howard Fishman. It's about five minutes long. So he's gonna kind of give you a little introduction as to what the collections committee gets up to. Uh, for those who uh, don't know me, including myself at times. Uh, my name's Howard Fishman, and I've been involved uh, with the museum since the year 2000. So um, as uh, Jamie finally calls me, I'm one of the gray beards. And um, I've been on the board probably for 15 of those 20 years. And um, I started there doing uh, actually grants for the museum, getting funding and was I'm proud to say was instrumental in getting our first paid staff person uh, into the museum, which was a, a major accomplishment. And, um, and we've continued to build from there. And um, now I'm on the collections committee. I'm also on the executive committee, uh, uh, which deals a lot with the administration of the museum. And I've been, a resident of Hermosa Beach since 1980. So um, I have a lot of longevity in the community and I have a vested interest 
in promoting our museum and letting the community see exactly what a great collection of items that we have uh, and the history of the city is something worth seeing and being involved in. And um, what is the role actually of the collections committee with the Hermosa Beach Museum? What do you guys usually kind of get up to when you meet? Well, the primary goal is to sort through, uh, I'll call it donations. People uh, will donate or drop off and we don't know sometimes who they are um, and they'll leave items for us to look at that may have some historical significance to them. Um, it's uh, sometimes we have walk-ins, uh, so it's not just finding things at our doorstep. Uh, people will call and say, hey, I have something. Are you interested in it? And uh, we're always interested in looking at things as long as there's a relevance to it um, for the most part. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Hermosa Beach specific uh, because we are in the South Bay and sometimes we may have some things donated uh, that may be from more relevant to other cities like Manhattan Beach or Redondo. And if that's the case and we take it, we will sometimes coordinate with the other two historical societies in those other cities and see if there's any interest in that. Um, we have received some really interesting items at times. Sometimes we get surfboards. We get things as big as a surfboard uh, and as little as a playbill uh, or a school yearbook. Uh, we've had a police motorcycle donated. We've had uniforms of public safety, um, lots of uh, postcards and uh, sometimes paintings. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. And that's part of the fun of being on this. And uh, th there are, I believe, three members of the collections committee. And we use Jamie as our focal point where she basically is the recipient of these items. And then she reviews it with our, our committee. And then we vote whether or not we want to keep something or not keep it. And then if you can remember, do you have a favorite object that um, has been a session during your time on the collections committee? Um, I'm a fan of Robbie Hudas, uh, who recently passed away and um, he donated some uh, prints and some pictures. And um, I fell in love with them when I saw them. Uh, so, you know, I'm partial to that. Uh, so, and so that would be some of my more favorite things that I've seen. Uh, but I do like the boards, um, some of the surfboards or longboards that have been donated. I mean, those are, since I don't surf, <laughs> but I live here <laughs> and I have, and what I see, we have a great collection of boards in the museum. And sometimes you look at these boards and I'm just amazed that somebody is willing to donate a, one of their surfboards. And so um, I'd say between Robbie Hudas's prints and surfboards, those would be like on the top of my list. And some things from the Pierre Avenue School, which is really fantastic because that was the very first school that we had in Hermosa Beach. And sometimes we'll get yearbooks and things that relate to that school, which is actually the building in which, uh, well, we're right adjacent to where the museum is. is where the school. Yeah, I think most of the guys that come into the museum that are probably, hmm, I'd say probably their 60s and upward, a lot of them did go to school um, at Pier Avenue. And uh, I always say, well, where you're standing right now in the museum, this was wood shop. And um, usually they tell me a story about, oh, I don't know. It, it's kind of changed, like kind of like a local legend where one version, it'll be some, some teacher that's like missing fingers, but um, usually he had kind of a special um, drinking a paper bag off to the side. <laughs> so um, definitely an interesting time. And then the, sh the room that's uh, kind of the second room in the museum that's adjacent kind of on the north side was um, the girl's shower at one point in time. So um, yeah, so that's a little clip from Howard. So this year, unfortunately, the collections committee didn't meet in person, but we did kind of get together virtually. And so all of the items that I'm going to share with you tonight were officially accessioned as of Monday. So cutting a little close, but hey, we got it done, right? Okay, so let's change. 
All right, so our collections. Collections in a nutshell, basically everything is split up into either an object, so that would be a three-dimensional object, meaning that it's, you know, I guess technically four-dimensional, so it's an actual thing. So this would be a motorcycle, um, a jacket, a toy car, um, a film reel. Then we also have our archival collection, so this would be anything flat. So Howard mentioned we do get a lot of playbills donated or yearbooks. Um, this is actually a playbill that was from the Hermosa Theater during, I think that was the rendition of it just after it changed over from its first one. And then also photographic. So this is kind of one of the iconic Biltmore photos that we have. So we're actually tonight going to start with objects. So one of our kind of first donations that we had this year was actually from Hermosa Escrow, who I believe is in the process of unfortunately closing their business, but um, Hermosa Escrow was opened and founded by Wilma Hastings. So she founded the escrow company um, as a first generation woman in America in 1969. Um, she lived in the South Bay. She was one of the charter members of the Sandpipers and she employed women in the South Bay for over 40 years, which I think is a really fantastic thing. Um, I think it's difficult for anyone to open their own business now, let alone in the 60s as a woman. That's definitely quite a huge um, check mark for her. Um, she was absolutely fantastic. So I never got to meet her, but she is absolutely still beloved by everyone who was still part of the business. So this is actually a canvas portrait of her that used to be hanging in the office at her work, along with a dedication plaque. Um, that they had made when she passed away in 2013. So I actually really quite like it. Every time I come around the corner and see her hanging in the museum, I kind of smile. Um, she seems, she, she really loved her family. I know oh, they also mentioned that she loved Christmas. That was her favorite time of year, uh, decorating for her family. Um, it was kind of, I don't know, I enjoyed kind of getting to know her through this new session. That looks like it could be like a postcard for Hermosa. Almost. She's stunning. She should be a postcard. I She probably would have, I don't know. I feel like she probably would have liked that, right? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? <laughs> She's stunning. We have to have her out at all times. I love yeah. her. <laughs> okay. So for our sporty friends out there, this is actually a super cool paddle board that we had donated. Um, Annie Seawright called me and said, there's this guy, Charles, that's going to come see you. So this is actually, and pardon the photo, it's already hanging up waiting for you guys to check it out when we can reopen, but this is a paddle board that actually holds a world record. Um, it was donated by Charles Didinger. Um, he was a part of a seven man team that set a world record crossing the English Channel and this board was the board he paddled on. Um, so the guys that were a part of that, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced someone's name. So well day, Derek and Mark Levy, Tim Ritter, Michael Lee, and Charlie, and John Mustache. So they set the record in 1996. So this board has definitely been places, which is kind of cool. So um, I actually really like all the, whenever I look at boards like this, I like looking at all the stickers for the different sponsors and stuff. So we've got some good ones. We've got Body Glove, Air New Zealand Hennessy's, of course, um, definitely some good stickers. And there's some down on the further end that I can't quite see in the photo, but that was kind of a fun one. Um, mm -hmm. We have quite a good collection of paddle boards. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. So next for objects, and this was kind of a fun one that I actually kind of already stuck a sneak preview on Instagram last night. So I kind of became a little bit obsessed with this bird. Um, so. Uh, Rick Koenig actually surprised me and came in with this bird one day. So we've actually had this poop deck sign in our collection for many years since before I came on. Um, I think since the museum opened in its current facility, but it was missing the bird and the bird finally just made its way back to the museum. So play a little. There's a story to be told of the sign from the poop deck in Hermosa Beach, which has been a favorite spot for hundreds of thousands of people for many years. It was my good fortune a few years back to be working on a project on Monterey. And we were tearing some cabinets and some walls out. And lo and behold, inside, hidden behind a cabinet, was the original Hoopjack sign. 
I thought, oh my God, well, that's really good in my backyard. I can't do that. I've got to give it to the museum so more people can see it. So I called the guy who just happened to be a friend of mine, Mike Ludwig, who sold the house to the new owners, who were my clients, and asked him. And he told me an interesting story. Apparently, in the late 50s, early 60s, there was an after-hours poker game going on inside of the poop deck with the owner and a couple of his buddies. Apparently, at one point in the evening, it got to be a relatively expensive pot. Whereas, the ownership of the poop deck was on the line, and all of a sudden, there was a brand new owner. Well, before the sun came up, ownership went back to the original owner, and I'm sure he was quite relieved. However, upon their exit, after this all-night poker game, the guy who had, who had owned the bar for a couple of minutes walked out and ripped that sign off the side. It used to hang out kind of onto the strand, so you can see it as you're going by. And when that happened, a piece of it went kind of tumbling over to the other side of the strand. Well, he took that home. My friend Mike Ludwig got it. It's really kind of unclear exactly what the mechanics were behind that, but the good news is, is 50 plus years later, it ended up at the museum where it belongs. That being such an icon of Hermosa Beach. About three years later, I get a phone call from an anonymous person that says, I understand that you retrieved the sign from the poop deck down in Hermosa Beach. I said, yes, who's calling? He said, well, that really isn't important. He said, I was there when it was ripped off the wall and there used to be a little bird that used to sit up on that thing. And when it got ripped off, that little bird kind of went bouncing across the strand. And the guy that took the sign didn't want the bird, so I picked it up. And uh, it's actually been, uh, been in my house for about half a century now. And I figure it's about time for that bird to fly back home to where it belongs. So the sign, so I got the bird. And here it is. Well, be at home. Nice looking bird, huh? And uh, now the two are united and are back at the world's greatest small town museum, the Hermosa Beach Historical <laughs> Society Museum. I was going to be really disappointed if I didn't get Rick's um, parrot impersonation <laughs> there. So, yeah, um, through an anonymous person that ended up picking it up when it went tumbling out onto the street when they um, pulled the sign off the building. Um, that person came to Rick and confessed that they had been concealing this bird for some time. Um, so it's, yeah, so the bird has finally come back home. Yeah, hilarious. Flew the coop, but came back. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I have to laugh a little bit to myself about this. Um, but I, I mean, like, how often is that going to happen? Probably not too often. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> definitely kind of funny. So um, when I go back and put this video on YouTube, I'll make sure that I edit in the video clips. Um, so you guys can, I don't want anyone to miss the Rick experience. Definitely not. <laughs> that character. I know. Okay, so we're going to kind of pass into archival. Um, let's see, as for archival, we're going to start out with the La La Land poster. Now, this is actually kind of a cool um, poster. I actually wish I had taken a photo of the back because it actually has some of the sheet music uh, prints from some of the original songs in it. But of course, La La Land that came out a few years ago kind of repopularized the lighthouse and has made it into a huge attraction. Um, however, I do have a confession. I still have not seen La La Land. Have you seen it, Nina? Oh my God. I watched it like last week. I I watched, I went and saw it in theaters. It's a just modern classic, I would say. I love it. I, I yeah, I, I compared it to Casablanca one time just because okay, I was like, okay. this is such a beautiful love story. Um, and it's really exciting to see Hermosa in it, of course. And, my sisters and I were like, how did we not know Ryan Gosling was going to be on the pier? <laughs> <laughs> right. It was like the best kept secret at that time. <laughs> oh my gosh. We would have rode our bikes down there and checked it out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Absolutely. So, okay. Well, I'm going to have to watch it. No excuses. We're all yeah, spending more time at already, home. I'm already seeing comments in the in, in the comment section that you oh no seen. I knew Dancy was oh Dancy I know I'm gonna be in serious trouble he's gonna call me next week and say you have you watched it yet <laughs> 
I mean, I did help out at the La La Land day that we had, what was that, 2019, Densi was at the last one, um, which was super fun. I'm, I still think that the decorative lights they put on the pier were absolutely fantastic. So um, pretty, so classic. Yeah. Very dreamy, very lovely. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll be able to do that again someday because I thought it was fun. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So next archival. Now this is kind of a classic um, and you know politics are always kind of circulating as a theme nowadays, but um, we had Howard and JR actually donate some of their old campaign posters for when they ran for city council. So I actually like getting campaign posters and things like that because we frequently will have artists come in and look to see, look, they'll ask to see um, things that are kind of you know, indicative of local style, like text and color um, when they're trying to work on a new piece or um, if usually that also happens when the murals project comes in. But it's kind of a fun thing to see um, the different posters and how they change through time. Um, so we do actually have quite a big collection of campaign signs and posters. Yeah, I really, I'm not a graphic designer, but um, I really, I can appreciate the ocean under JR's for city council. Howard Fishman, the font just looks very kind of retro beachy to me. I, you know, right on, looks great. I know, I like it. Um, I'll have to, Howard, if you're still here, um, put in the chat um, what year this poster was from. And you probably know, someone probably knows what year JR's was from as well. Um, that's actually, ooh, that's actually a good thing. We should be attaching the years um, to these posters so that we know when they ran, so. Um, so yeah, if you've run for city council recently, we don't have your poster, come find us. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, now I also saw that Jim logged in, so he'll probably be laughing a little bit because I'm obsessed with this parking ticket. So, um, but this is actually from when Jim Rosenberger was mayor, he issued Jay Leno a parking ticket, um, which has some amazing lines in it. Um, let's see, whereas Mr. Leno has never gotten a parking ticket in Hermosa Beach as confirmed by a computer warrant check and whereas the above named comedian has either learned our, our many varied and confusing parking regulations or is personally wiping the chalk tires off his tires. This is very good. This is very good. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> we have our Hermosa Beach gossip, celebrity gossip. <laughs> yeah, right. So I don't know. I mean, I know that Jay Leno um, kind of always consistently um, would come down to the club periodically, um, but I don't know if he was um, after he retired, probably. I, I remember I, I worked at BKB, so I'd walk past um, the Calling Magic Club and um, I always saw like Jay Leno almost like every Sunday night, I think. And okay. I was always really impressed with that. I was like, Every Sunday night, I, I never saw him there. I was a minor at the time. So, um, but I was, I was always like, I'm very impressed by Jay Leno showing up here every Sunday night. <laughs> That's true. So he's, so he's definitely been around still. Yeah. So, and then, okay, last. So, and this ticket actually kind of kicked me off in this little obsession about parking in Hermosa. So if you guys want to have a little bit of a laugh with me, that exhibition is up on our website, um, especially it, between this ticket and then the photo that's in the graphic there of someone putting the bottle cap into the parking meter, um, which I thought was really classic. Um, still, the jury is out. I've had some people tell me that the bottle caps, sometimes the meters would read it as a quarter. Um, so, you know, you get free parking, but some people said that it also jammed the meter and it used to be that you could park at a jammed meter and not get a ticket. Of course, we know that's not the case anymore. Um, so, but maybe it was different meters in different places, different generations of meters. Um, but I do remember people putting bottle caps into meters. Sneaky, very sneaky. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so this is actually kind of the fun stuff. This year, our photographic sessions were just, I'm blown away, knocked it out of the park, hands down some amazing things. And I'm so excited about future projects with them. So we're gonna start off with the C. Wright Family Photographic Collection. So this was brought to me by Annie C. Wright um, as her family also allowed us to go ahead and scan their entire family photo albums ranging from 1914 to 1961. Now photos from 1914 of her grandmother and grandfather in Hermosa Beach. 
which is quite amazing. And I think you folks have already seen some of those kind of like iconic photos before. Um, the one on the left there in front of the Biltmore Hotel is just, just timeless and absolutely fabulous. Um, volleyball, of course, um, C. Wright's found in the volleyball tourney. Um, the photo of Bunny riding her bike down the strand is gorgeous. Um, I'm sure Annie probably knows. I don't remember who the lady is with her, but I think she was one of her close friends. And I had to include the one with the poodle because it looks like my poodle and I was obsessed. Mm -hmm. So I was super excited. Um, but I love these photos specifically because you can actually see what their yard looked like, um, which we don't have a lot of photos of the inside of people's like old classic Hermosa houses or in the yards. Um, so this is definitely kind of an exciting thing. They have like a little sand pit that they made out of bricks they would play in, which is, you know, super, super cute. Mm -hmm. um, so Wait. those are absolutely amazing photos, again, from 1914 to 61. So, um, and I actually scanned the whole pages because I kind of felt that um, the way she uh, scrapbooked them with the white writing and she drew little pictures in some of them was kind of its own moment to itself. She kind of curated um, Bunny made all these scrapbooks. Um, she kind of curated them into her own little memory journey. Um, and I thought that was special. So as much as we'll crop some photos out for um, research and history, um, I also like having the actual scrapbook pages scanned as well. Wow. So lucky that we have these photos that they let us look at these photos. I know, absolutely. It was just a real treat to be able to scan those. Um, yeah, and actually, um, Greg's daughter, Paige, helped me out scanning with some of them too, awesome. so, which was really great. Yeah, she's a fabulous helper. She's a good scanner. <laughs> All right, and then moving right on with photographic, technically photographic, but technically negative, we have the Robbie Hutas photographic collection. Um, Robbie actually passed away earlier this year um, due to natural causes. And we worked with um, his part of attorney, Jean Lundy, to bring these negatives, uh, courtesy, thank you, Dan Inskeep, of course, your help, um, to the museum. Um, and this cabinet is actually, it lives in my mind's eye a little bit because this is actually exactly how it was sitting in Robbie's bedroom before he passed away. Um, I did get to go over and visit with him once um, with John Miller, um, who was really close with him, always called him Bully. Um, that was kind of his nickname. So I actually, you know, we're running out of space in the museum. I didn't know where to put it. So I literally just, it's the first thing you see when you walk in. Um, and we have one of his little cameras off to the side as well, which is kind of a nice thing to have. Um, Robbie actually came to Hermosa Beach after he left Hungary during the Revolutionary War in 1957. And we actually have a copy of his immigration papers, which is quite um, wow. something to see. And he kind of, I feel like the second he landed here, I know everybody else, probably so many people in this call know more about his history than me, but um, he's been a, he was a huge part of the South Bay art world since the 1960s. Um, what a character. He was a bodybuilder, was very popular with the ladies, absolutely stunning man. <laughs> and I didn't meet him until much later in life, but I always joke that he had this mischievous twinkle in his eye that I really appreciated. So, I mean, and his photographic work as well as his artwork was just absolutely fantastic. Um, his volleyball photos, um, he documented almost every tourney he could get to, um, fantastic shots. I think most of the classic volleyball photos that I've seen out there um, from that period from the 60s and 70s were done by Robbie. Robbie also did a lot of work to document local businesses. Um, this photo here of La Plieta is definitely a classic one that we've had up on our website for a while. Um, and he also did a project at one point where he took photos of all the houses on the Strand. I think, John Miller, you probably know, but I think it was in the 90s, uh, maybe the early 2000s, um, maybe, maybe earlier. Um, but he really did a lot of, as he had a very broad, um, career as an artist and he really documented the South Bay in ways that I don't even think he realized until later on in life exactly what a resource this was. So his negatives are currently residing with us and we're very excited to hopefully start working on that project sometime. Resources, so right. I mean, the South Bay is changing in so many ways and so it's really nice to have those old homes and, you know, restaurants documented. Um, it's very exciting. It's so sad whenever you see an old you know, beach bungalow go down. Um, so I'm happy to hear, I didn't know that he did a series of homes. So I would love to take a look at that. And this La Plata restaurant picture is one of my favorites. 
my mom always talked about one of her friends who works in that window right there. And mm-hmm. uh, I never, there's no window there anymore. So I was always like, window, what window? So there's the window of that. Yeah, there. there it is. So they used to have like a takeout counter there or something. Yeah, yeah. Her okay. best friend Cambria works in the window. So. Oh, the, oh my gosh, Cambria. That's very cool. I forgot. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to about Cambria? that if I see her. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, no, he has some fantastic <laughs> photos. Um, absolutely amazing. So he was very talented and very well loved by yeah. everybody in town. So I know Dan Inskeep said that because um, he plays with, I think, the 16th Street Volleyball uh, group. And he used mm-hmm. to come every year and take a picture of um, their players. Um, oh, that's awesome. yeah, he, he, never, he never missed anything. Um, no. Yeah, he was quite a guy. Awesome. All right. So Dylan, this is your time. You have to, we're going to have to have you come on camera and say hello. So this is definitely one of our big babies. So we also this year accessioned the Easy Reader Photographic Collection, which was a series of nine file cabinets that Kevin Cody gave to us um, that span the range it's actually quite a, an example to the field of photography because the photos span from the 60s, the 1960s to the early 2000s. And we have prints, we have negatives, we have slides, we have CDs. And Dylan, was there a floppy disk in there somewhere too? Oh, turn your microphone on, Dylan. Uh, oh, can go. you guys hear me now? Yes. Oh yeah, there was a lot of those. <laughs> Gosh, okay, so what uh what have you found in those photos because dylan has actually um been one of our fantastic archival volunteers and you have completely spearheaded this project and done most of the repacking of all of the photos and the sorting of them as well so what have you found in there what were some of the exciting things yeah so first of all thank you for having me on jamie i'm loving the presentation i really like that story of rick and the bird i like that little bird guy (laughs) <laughs> but anyways, the Easy Reader collection has been really fun to work on. I've looked at photos from the late 60s all the way to early 2000s of Hermosa Beach and the South Bay. It was a really generous donation, and it was really fun to go through all those photos of many different subjects. Everything was covered. Halloween, in the top right, you can see that photo of people dressed up at a fair and then Santa Claus on the motorcycle for Christmas. So many sports photos and videos. All the fairs and festivals of Hermosa, Manhattan, Redondo were covered in it. Lots of folders of pictures and pictures and pictures. It was really fun to see it all. And I'm still working on it. It's not over yet. Oh no, in fact, we're just in the first stages of the project. Um, This is definitely going to be a big one. Um, And our original plan was actually to kind of involve all of you folks a little bit more in our community and have you guys come in and help us identify some of the photos. So we're gonna be, you know, continuing to make efforts to bring those photos to you virtually. So keep an eye out because we need your help to figure out who these people are. Look at this adorable child no idea who it is so if you know who these folks are um because some of them had uh, newspaper captions on the back what do you think maybe like a maybe like a third of them dylan uh probably less than that had a little news clipping on it yeah but we need to find out who these folks are we need help dating them that's all definitely a thing so um we're going to be bringing more of these photos to you virtually as we work on processing them and scanning them and then okay there we go okay happening at the museum this year dylan um thank you again dylan is actually going to be doing the trial run of our first ever student exhibition which is super exciting we're hoping to make this an annual event and your subject is skateboarding then it's about skateboarding in the, the late 70s, early 80s. There was a bunch of uh, photographs from the Easy Reader collection, including the one that's shared on the screen of kids skateboarding around Hermosa, Manhattan. And the photos from the Easy Reader collection really is what inspired this exhibition because these photos are just like 
a pastime that I love to appreciate because I'm a skateboarder myself. So it's been really cool looking at all of these photos when skateboarding first started taking off in the late seventies and how the boards progressed and the tricks progressed and companies were coming out. So it's been really fun to look at all these photos and put them all together with some other collections that are already in the museum to coordinate this exhibition all about skateboarding. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. So we're going to be working in the next two months to actually install this exhibition and get it ready um, so that whenever the museum is allowed to safely reopen in accordance with county protocols, we will have a new exhibition for you guys to come see by appointment. Um, so that will definitely be fun and we're going to work in some programming around that as well of that'll probably also still have a virtual component so that we can, you know, still kind of put out our feelers and get in touch with everybody everywhere. So thank you, Dylan, for popping in. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, if thank you want you. to, you are, you are free to head off and enjoy the rest of your night and I'll see you next week. Okay. See you next week. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye, Dylan. And I absolutely love this photo. I think it's super cool. I was going to say this photo is classic. I mean, and we don't know who these kids are either. Uh, um, we have to find out. The most I was able to, I did actually message, because on his sleeve, it's let's say, Gordon and Smith. Um, and I did message them. And I guess they were selling their skateboards and kind of gear because of you know their surfboards primarily but they did start selling their stuff in the late 60s early 70s um at et and they had a store in redondo and then a couple places in manhattan mm. so i don't know where these kids so that that was my only lead was that t-shirt sleeve so yeah that's that's it just it's so funny and i i'm just wondering where these kids got these giant cans and you know there's a beer can at the bottom over here it looks like they're in an alleyway it's just it's so um it's just so fun I love it I think it's hilarious I know I picked this one because I think it probably is one of my favorites although there's some um the Easy Reader collection had some absolutely stunning uh, skateboarding photos that I have not seen before. And most of the folks that we've showed them to to help us identify them, uh, like Cindy Whitehead, they don't know um, who, they've never seen those photos before. But yeah, this was my favorite. And of course, we don't know who these kids are. So um, I think I'm going to have to share some of these on the Hermosa Beach uh, Residence mm -hmm. Forum. Yeah, no, whenever, whenever there are Instagram posts of something in the 80s, I always run to my mom and like, do you recognize any of these people? And sometimes she does, or sometimes the place. It's, um, so I'll send Aaron over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, we'll, we'll definitely get Aaron down. I love your mom. She's fantastic. So yeah, she loves, she loves to help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she loves to help. I would say that about my mom too. So <laughs> <laughs> Definitely awful. So yeah, I know. I just love the whole. And look at this kid just flying off that piece of wood over those like beach department trash barrels. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually trying to figure out. I wonder um, how far away they are from the beach. How far do they have to or the strand, how far do they have to roll these things to get this set up? I don't know. Well, to me, it looks like an alley of a walk street almost because that's that what someone told me it was a walk street somewhere in Hermosa. Someone else said maybe Manhattan. Maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, the kids still dress the same. You got your Vans, your OP shorts and your um, high socks. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that is actually a really good point. No, <laughs> definitely kind of circled back around to the style, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> so those are amazing photographic collections. So I'm actually going to, and I had a few more I just had to throw in. They weren't a part of the big collections, but they were just such like shout outs for some of the people that emailed them to me. So this year, what is the museum looking for? And I will absolutely hands down say photographs. So if you have any old photographs um, of houses, of people, of places, of landmarks, um, please get in touch with us via email. And this is also something that you guys can participate in and help out with us um, during the COVID pandemic, because you can send us emails, get in touch with us, schedule a Zoom meeting, or give us a call um, to donate these photographs virtually from anywhere at any time. So these two photos I actually really love. Um, 
were donated by Stephanie Miller. So this is her, I believe, great, great grandmother, Helen Blind um, on the right here. And she moved to Hermosa when she got a job teaching at uh, Redondo High. Um, and one thing I really love about this is because you see the photo of her with the house in 1914, and then you see the house again in 1924, which is definitely kind of an interesting thing to have two photos of the same house, um, you know, kind of, well, not kind of actually exactly a decade apart you can see how much it's already kind of changed. They've modernized and have like a new planter instead of the the kind of the, the casual sand and you know embankment. Um, there's a new house next door to them. It's definitely kind of a cool thing to see. It's definitely like looks like one of those classic little um, beach bungalows. So which I think some of them I actually met someone as well that told me that some of them were from the Sears catalog. Um, they had bought and ordered some of the houses and set them up. Um, I don't know if this one in this photo specifically was from uh, a Sears catalog, but I know there is one that still exists that has not been remodeled and still has the original poured concrete porch. Um, they're still kind of hiding behind some of the big houses. <laughs> in the shadows, yeah. 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 The, the house my dad grew up on, on 14th, right above PCH, was driven over here from Beverly Hills. Like it was one of those houses that was uplifted, put okay, on a pick bed, them up. bed and, and taken over here. I think I could ask him he's upstairs, but I think it, I think it, the house itself is from 1902 and it like wow. came over here, like around this like 1920s, I think in Hermosa. And when they set it down, it, you know, it's right about the Vons and the, and the Hermosa Beach Plaza. So it was just fields. There was nothing. It was just this beautiful home and the home is still there too. I think it is historically. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think it's historically preserved. Um, and it's That's amazing. It has, yeah. It has a basement, it has a porch, it has beautiful, you know, it's very like craftsman style. So mm -hmm. yeah, these houses, oh, they're, they're so fun to, when you spot them, they're really exciting to see and sweet. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. It, so they drove it all the way from Beverly Hills and parked it here. I like that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And back that's, in the day when you could take your house with you sometimes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They were not in bumper to bumper on the 405 or anything like that. It was, <laughs> Although when I'm sitting bumper to bumper in traffic, um, seeing a house on the back of a flatbed might be a little more entertaining. Than, that would be um, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely get my attention. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. And then, okay, so this, oh, if Adam is tuned in, he's going to be super excited. But this was, these were photos actually donated by Anthony Adler that he emailed us. So I actually got in touch with Anthony through his mother-in-law who lives in Hermosa Beach. And uh, Anthony married her daughter and she found out that he had, and I think they live back in Minnesota or in the Midwest now, um, but he had all these historic photos because he had actually had family that came to Hermosa Beach. Um in the early 1900s, so between 1905 and 1922. Um, I believe these photos were taken around 1922 at some time. Um, but this is definitely an image that I've never seen before. Um, the vote for the pier sign is super iconic. Um, I know I mentioned Adam because um, he was saying, oh my gosh, he was the one who actually looked at these and said, oh wait, you can stitch them together. So I just kind of overlaid them, it's not formal, but um, it's so cool to actually see that. And then with the couple, walking um the hermosa beach uh grocery store and i think that was also at some point they were selling train tickets there as well um but this is fantastic photos and the quality is amazing isn't it totally i like the overlapping it's like a parent trap you know just putting the yeah. photo together <laughs> it's very good so these are both photos um yeah what was it yeah his great great grandparents george cleveland and wife alice moved to hermosa from minnesota in 1905 and then these photos he says were probably taken around 1922 when they had some other family members come to visit hence why they had a camera out um so that is definitely very early hermosa so vote for the pier you know it has i'm wondering if it's before 1922 because wasn't it 1914 when the when the official wood pier opened up before that, there was like kind of like an unofficial one, but then I think was it 1914 or 1916 that the official pier opened. So it must be earlier than 22. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, somebody fact check me. Um, 
but it definitely might be earlier now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, these it's are very good. I've been using these as my Zoom background as well because I really like them. So, <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for um, kind of taking a little journey with some of our sessions. I have to admit some of them were kind of just like my favorite picks um, because I was putting the presentation together, but um, <laughs> and we did actually have a lot of other things that were generously donated by folks in the community. Um, so thank you to everyone that has donated or been a part of the process. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. And then hopefully technology permitting, I have an extra little video clip to play for you guys. Happy New Year to all of you. And thank you for joining us this evening for the 2020 acquisitions highlights. 2020 gave us many challenges, but also provided us unique opportunities to share all different types of uh, content here in the museum. Although state and county um, mandates still make it uncertain when we're able to have in-person museum visits, you can count on us to provide you with wonderful content all through 2021. Awesome. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, and I have a little bit some extra time. So if anybody has any questions, you can pop them into the chat or in the Q&A box. Um, actually, I see some Q&As here. Okay. A session or acquisition as on screen. Okay. So oh, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. So I actually really miss Cheryl. I was just texting with her today. Cheryl is our actual official archival um, keeper, tracker, filer person. Um, so, oh no, a session or acquisition is on screen. So these are all our new acquisition acquisitions that were accessioned. Does that make sense? I think that was probably the question. Okay. So yesterday I offered a label pin from 1996 Hermosa Beach Film Festival. I also have some newspaper clippings from the beach film that I had not put my email. I hope to hear from you. I would like to see them preserved. Hi, Robert. Thank you so much. I did get your email and I have it in my calendar to respond to a bunch of emails tomorrow morning. So I will get in touch with you. Um, I love pins. We actually have this really cool pull out flat drawer um, that has lots of pins and uh, pencils and stuff like that. Um, and I'm really super obsessed with it. I think Bradley made that drawer um, a couple years ago. So yeah, absolutely. And then Hermosa has the first publicly funded skateboard park in LA County. I didn't wow. know that. That is exciting. That's, that's exciting. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I know that they were, um, was it there was a big one in Tor Torrance? Did that have one of the first skate parks, but it probably wasn't publicly funded? Right. I Yeah, publicly funded is probably the yeah. little loophole. Mm hmm. In touch with Dylan Lombardo, then, you know, some skate history. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then Pratik says, Do you want any digital photos and how recent are you looking for? Thanks for a wonderful presentation. Um, thank you, Pratik. Actually, yes. Um, I did actually reach out to some people to get photos of the um, peaceful demonstrations that happened during George Floyd, um, which we did actually get some of those into our collection more recently as well. Um, let's see. So if, you know, if there's something happening in Hermosa and you have new photos that you would like to donate, definitely reach out. Um, I'm, I do like to kind of be a little bit more proactive with our accessions and make sure that we are including things that are happening now. Um, it's to our advantage if we wait 30 years to start looking for photos of an event that happened in the past, it might not always pan out. So um, if there are any new photos of something that's happened, um, definitely get in touch with us. Um, an example of that is that I actually recently came across a file of public works photos from the 90s, mm -hmm. uh, which the 90s, you know, super recent, but it's amazing how much has changed since then. And some of them I kind of included in the uh, virtual parking exhibition because they were kind of funny. Um, but definitely stuff like that is always appreciated. So, and again, you can send us photos virtually at any time. So, okay, I don't see any other questions. Nina, did you have a question? I know we just kind of blasted through everything. You know, uh, none kind of, I was kind of wondering, uh, the, the last photo, the, um, the one from, we're guessing with the pier, um, sign vote for the pier. Do you know where the grocery store was or, um, where I, I'm what? wondering if this is the Santa Fe building.
building was it the, it was at the santa fe train station and i'm actually wondering if it is because it has these um it has these like arches up yeah. here mm -hmm. um that i recognize in fo other photos and i so i think it's actually served a few purposes because i actually think the window over on the side here is possibly where they were selling uh tickets mm -hmm. so i think it's and I was actually surprised as well to see the grocery sign. And then also on the side, it says real estate too. I know. I, I, yeah, I saw that. Wow. So it looks like they had a couple things going on in that building. Wow. So, and I'm, I'm guessing that this, you know, is Hermosa Avenue here. So this must be the red car track. Um, so it's got to be the corner of Pier and thank you, Adam. Yeah, Pier mm -hmm. and Hermosa Avenue. And he says, yes, the Santa Fe station. Because um, I also have a... There's an aerial photo of this building specifically with like nothing else around it. It was one of the first buildings that was put down there, um, which is kind of cool. So I wish it was still standing, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't know what's in its place, actually. What's on the what's on the corner for most of the folks of. Uh, well, it could be here the Bank of America or Zane's or the yeah. Chase building or the sushi place. Okay, so we've got some choices here. Yeah. It looks like this is west though, so that makes me think uh, yeah. makes me think it was um, maybe the Bank of America. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm just guessing though. Yeah, just Which of course became the Bijou Theater. Uh, that's the next chain. door. Oh, yeah, next door was the yeah. Bijou. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be that yeah. that kind I'm of sure. empty lot sitting over there, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, amazing! Great, great photo choices, Jamie. Oh, thank you. No, seriously. Um, everybody sent in some great material to work with, so that's why I definitely recommend if you guys have some photos, definitely send them over. Um, especially if something's going on. Um, you know, if there's an event um something like that please send them to us you know because we can file them away and the beautiful thing about photos is that a picture is worth a thousand words but it only takes up this much space and the museum is definitely running out of space so um, photos are good things to have so yeah thank you everybody i don't see any other questions okay nina thank you so much for joining and i totally didn't introduce you earlier but nina actually is our newest addition to our board of directors um, and she joined us last year and she's been a fantastic addition, a refreshing perspective and just an all around fabulous lady to have. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being here. I love hosting. This was fun. I can't wait for the next one. Okay, perfect. I will definitely give you a shout out because um, I was joking with Greg yesterday that if I was going to do this presentation where I was sitting in a room talking to myself for an hour, it was going to get real weird real quick. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it. So, okay, folks, thank you. Um, if you guys want to hear Rick's story uninterrupted, it's currently on our IGTV. Um, and then I'm going to actually go, go ahead and cut that into our YouTube edio of this video tomorrow morning. So thank you everybody for coming. And Densi, I promise I will watch La La Land, okay? And I'll send you an email after I do. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. Thank you. We can all use a little bit of levity nowadays anyways. So I could definitely go for a nice, you know, breezy film. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy. It's fun. It's a little heartbreak. Oh, I don't want to say anymore. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night and we will see you back here in February. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.